NASA's Perseverance rover will land on Mars in only a few days. It will search for traces of past life and attempt the first motorized flight outside of Earth. Hi, I'm Carlos. There are 10 Maxon motors in the rover. They will assist with the first stage of a historical mission that includes the return of samples to Earth for the first time. Six extra motors will control the tilt of the rotors in the Ingenuity helicopter. Maxon Motors has been involved in the exploration of Mars for over 30 years. Mars offers rich and dynamic landscapes. The landing site selection is a crucial part of the mission. It requires a combination of geological features and physical characteristics to allow for a safe landing and successfully achieve the mission targets. The chosen spot was the Jezero crater. A dry delta on Jezero's western edge is the target for the landing site. Slowly flowing waters full of nutrients and relatively shallow areas are ideal for the proliferation of life on Earth, and the same could have been true on Mars. We took it upon ourselves to run a quick example of this fact. NASA has produced a great video for the entry, descent and landing of this mission. Let's look at it. Reaching the top of the atmosphere is officially the beginning of the EDL stage. In only seven minutes, the probe will be on Mars. However, Earth is 10 light minutes away. So when we hear news of the beginning of this stage, the probe will either be safely landed for three minutes or it will have already crashed. Let's just pause here for a second. What we're seeing right there is as uh, the probe approaches Mars, the gravitational pull increases, so the velocity increases. It's been traveling at about 16,000 kilometers an hour with respect to Mars, and as it gets closer, accelerates. And at that point that we are seeing now, it's reaching its peak velocity, which is about 20,000 kilometers an hour. Let's keep watching. As it enters the atmosphere, it uses the heat shield to protect the instruments inside, and at the same time, reduce speed in a process called aerobraking. As the speed reduces, corrections are made to compensate for small fluctuations in density in the atmosphere. When the speed reaches 1500 kilometers an hour, it is time to deploy the parachute. What we see down there is the river we just saw in our model, the rim of the crater that is used to be the, the shore lake, and further down the delta and the edge of the delta where the landing site is happening. The parachute will reduce the speed to 520 kilometers an hour when it will be time to deploy the heat shield. With the heat shield out of the way, the instruments can take measurements and calculate where the optimal landing site will be. Within less than a minute, a solution is found and the landing site is decided. Now what you see there, it's hard to realize in this scale, but this is the size of a truck holding a car under it. After the back shell separation, the descent is controlled by the jets on the back shell itself. When it reaches 21 meters of altitude, it will start what's known as the crane maneuver. This has been attempted for the first time in Curiosity and has proven to be a great alternative to the airbags used previously in Spirit and Opportunity. As soon as the rover detects that the wheels are touching the ground, the connection cables are broken, and the crane is free to fly away, otherwise it would fall on top of the rover. The rover will climb the gentle slopes behind it, about 100 meters high, that mark the edge of the delta, and will investigate for signs of past microbial life. It will later move on to the hills behind, rising 500 meters, marking the shores of the ancient lake. We're confident that this will be another success story from NASA and we're looking forward to the results.